Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Zoo Tiles Fruits Basket. This is a two-player battling tile placement game by Jab Anime Games. It takes roughly about 30 to 50 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. And in this game, you're going to be gathering five tiles, placing them down as either animal tiles or action slash reaction tiles, items, and of course, obstacles. Your objective is to score 12 points by battling other cards and creating perfect squares. When you do so, you'll place them in your point section and as soon as you reach that point total, you win. However, the other way you can win is if your opponent runs out of tiles. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to set the game up, how to play it, of course, my review. Setting the game up is very easy. When you start with purchasing this, it is going to be a two player game, but it can be played with up to four players and there are enough animals for four players. In this alone though, there's only going to be six animals, three for each player. One player is going to play as the rabbit, pig, and ram, and the other player is going to play as the tiger, the dog, and the horse. You're going to shuffle all the tiles up and then you're going to deal them out into five stacks of eight tiles. Once you've done that, you're going to take five tiles from anywhere on any of the stacks to form your hand. When you've got your five tiles, then you're going to decide if you can keep the hand. If you don't at least have one animal, you'll shuffle all the tiles up once again and draw five until you do. So you're always gonna to wanna to have at least a ram or a rabbit or a goat or a sheep, etc., etc., to begin the game. After that, you're ready to begin the first action. It's that simple. So this title, Zoo Tiles, Fruits Basket, is basically the same as Zoo Tiles, but with the IP attached of Fruits Basket. You are going to be taking your tiles and playing them uh, just like you would the original game. And if you haven't played the original game, I'll explain that to you. But now it has the Fruits Basket IP attached to it. On your turn, you'll be selecting from a ton of actions that you can do on your turn. The first thing that you can do is you can go ahead and place one of the animals in the middle of the game board. The first one is always gonna go in the middle and every one after that will be attached neighboring a tile. Neighboring is always going to be an up, down, left, or right. So you're never going to place a tile here or here or here unless there's already one that's been placed that you can neighbor, attach to. The other things that you can do are you can play up to two actions and each action is going to create an action stack. So I would go ahead and play an A card down off to the side somewhere, and then my opponent can play an R card. And R cards can continue being played back and forth until it stops. From there, you'll have created a stack, and you'll start with the top one, and you will go down, just like in Magic the Gathering, completing all of the reactions and then the final action and seeing what happens to the game board. Do that up to two times if you want and if you have the tiles. The other thing that you can choose to do is you can discard two tiles from your hand to draw any one here and the last thing that you can do is attack. If you have a creature and that creature is neighboring an opponent's creature, then you can choose to battle. And battling is quite simple as well. What you're gonna do in a battle is you're going to select your creature that you're battling with and your opponent's defender that they are battling with. Then each player is going to select any neighboring allies of the creatures that were defined in the battle and add their strength to the attackers or defenders strength, depending on who you are, and intellect. The only way you win a battle is if your strength is higher than your opponent's strength and your intellect is higher than your opponent's intellect. After you've selected allies, then the attacking player is going to select a card, any tile, I should say, face down. And that is going to start a battle stack. So that from there, each player is going to be able to start doing the same thing you would do with a battle stack. This player could go ahead and play an R card for a reaction on top of that. And then I could go ahead and place an R card and have a reaction for that. And you would settle them. You go all the way down the reactions until you got to the last tile, which is a battle action. And you would discard it, as well as discarding all the rest of them and performing any actions. Then you will go ahead and check to see, does your strength and int as the attacker outweigh the strength and int of the defender and if it does, either side will get all of the allies and the main creature chosen. So if the defender beats out the attacker's allies and main attacker, then they will score and vice versa. And scoring is just going to be taking those tiles and putting them into the discard pile uh, or putting them into their scoring pile. Sorry. You're going to have two sets of uh, spaces on the sides of your tiles here. One side is where you score things. So for instance, whenever you meet a perfect combination, which I'll explain, or whenever you defeat things in battle, such as allies and the defender or attacker, you'll place them over here. That can get you one point for each one you defeat. Now, the last way to score is by creating perfect combinations. When you select tiles and place them down and neighbor other people's tiles, you're going to check to see 
if these four tiles will make a perfect square. And how you do that is you will look on each of the tiles. The top represents what the tile is, in this case it's a ram, and then what tiles can neighbor this tile in order for them to be connected. In this case here, this tile can be attached to a rabbit, a, another ram, a horse, and a pig. If we had a rabbit and a rabbit here, and then this side here had a dog, and this dog was attached to a rabbit and a rabbit, if all four connect to each other, you're simply going to take all of these tiles here and score them up. So it's a good way to invest in making sure the tiles all connect in certain ways to score points. Doesn't matter if the tiles are yours or if they are your neighbors. As long as you make that four, then you're going to score and win. At the end of your turn, you are going to be able to draw a tile from any of the stacks here. So if I play my actions and I played a creature and I chose to battle, I'll just draw at the end of my turn. However, if you chose to do no actions, you can instead draw two tiles and then your play is going to pass. And that's basically the game, it's that simple. Uh, very similar rules uh, as to the original game, basically. I mean, maybe I got a few real rules wrong, I think, in the previous video, which is why I'm explaining this one a little better, hopefully, now. But yes, that's what you do. Place a tile out, then you can take up to two actions and do the stacks. Uh, you can choose to battle, and you can choose to discard two cards and draw a new one. Cards are interchangeable with tiles in this game, by the way. Uh, and then creating perfect squares, Creatures that attach to the creatures that are neighboring them will get you those four points, as well as when you battle going through all those steps, you will score all of the losing players' main and allied tiles and put them into your pile here. Up to 12 makes you win the game, or if you can somehow make your opponent eliminate all of the tiles on their area, then you will win as well. Let's talk about my review now. So Zoo Tiles basically plays the same as the original game with the added fruit basket theme, but I got a few rules wrong, so I kind of wanted to clarify those up a bit. I also want to talk about the obstacles and of course the items, how they function. They're really unique. They're going to be ways of placing down obstacles and items like creatures, but they can't be scored and they cannot attack themselves but they function in every other way. They usually will have actions and reactions that you can use on them and they will be created as part of action stacks. These tiles here are action tiles and reaction tiles because sometimes on the grid, they will say like, have a reaction uh, with this tile here and you'll use this in place. It's like a, as a placeholder of a tile that's in play. There are weaker animals than other animals. Sometimes you'll have rabbits and sometimes you're gonna be having tigers and they're gonna be stronger than those rabbits. However, the rabbits themselves are very useful because there's certain things like rabbit holes that are going to allow you to hide rabbits when in a reaction, or they are going to be able to put into, into play rabbits as an action as allies. So just because you're playing weaker animals doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose with those animals. And if you play correctly, you can strategize ways to benefit yourself to putting out lots of animals that can kind of move around the grid and hide, utilizing the actions that you have. You're always going to want to focus on what actions and reactions do I have? What animals do I have? How likely are they to win in a fight? Are they gonna be more function functionally useful when it comes to making a two by two grid? Or can you use them in some way with an item or an obstacle to benefit you in some way? Sometimes it's better to choose to do nothing. Drawing extra tiles that gives you a better hand that will let you use it for next round is just fine, provided that maybe you don't lose that many points on the turn that your opponents take because you chose to do nothing or that they can't do anything to hinder you. As long as they can't make that four by four grid or attack and defeat one of your creatures, you're fine in the game. And you cannot lose until they score 12 points or you run out of tiles here. Thusly, digging for tiles will be helpful in this game. Making sure that when you place them out in certain ways to combat your opponents is going to be beneficial. Adding allies to surrounding creatures that might be attacked is useful as well. And keeping actions and reactions for the most beneficial times is going to be helpful. This game is all about playing back and, a, back and forth with your opponent and trying to devise a game of wits to allow yourself to have the best possible field and hand as possible. There has this really cool action and reaction stack which functions in the same way with a battle, but you have to discard a battle a card, so to speak, or a tile just to play a battle. So sometimes it may or may not be worth it. If you're holding onto a really useful item and you want to perform a battle, but you have to discard that as a face down action in order to perform the battle, it might not be worth it. Even scoring one or two points could lose you the game with a tile that could actually benefit you later in a greater way as you place tiles down. The fact that each deck has their own unique reactions and actions and animals is great. But what's also great too is at the back of the book, 
there is going to be a way for you to customize your deck. And it goes through how it works. There's no maximum deck size. It has to consist of at least five tiles. Whatever the deck size before you play the deck must be randomized and divided into five stacks. And before play begins, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera, it, it describes that and utilizes all the animals in the game. And there's quite a few. Now, this is, of course, the base game. And it's made for two players. And there can be a three and four player variant if you get another set of these guys here. But there's a large variety of animals here that can be represented in the game and those will be represented with actions reactions and tiles that are both action slash reaction tiles and you can use them in any order interchangeably the fruits basket theme if you're a big fan of fruits basket and you want a nice easy to play tile placement game with some unique choices and strategy this is going to be the game for you for sure it has a cute set of all of the artwork from fruits basket and it <laughs> combines all the different cute animals from zoo tiles all the artwork is really well attached to the anime, and the theme feels like it is attached as well. Overall, this is a fun game. Just like I had previously explained about this game in a previous video, I still really enjoy this game. Attached with the new IP, it's wonderful, and if you want something that's simplistic, but yet has a depth of strategy to it, and can play two players, or four if you get another set of these guys, then definitely go ahead and check out this game. Overall, a solid experience and a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Zoo Tiles Fruits Basket. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below in the description. And also, if I earned your subscription, please decide to subscribe to the channel. If this is more than the first video you've watched of mine, and you think I've helped in any way, shape, or form, I do greatly appreciate it. It does help us out and continues to allow us to do more videos just like this one here. We have a live stream on Whatnot every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, and on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games, we sell games, and we give away games for free. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling it out with you guys next time.